G'day. My name's Nathan Linzel, and welcome to episode number 19 of The Fine Art of Distraction. Thanks for joining me. So today, I'm going to be stepping ever so slightly away from fluid art. I'm still going to be doing a fluid art technique, but I'm going to be using resin. Ew! <laughs> And what am I going to be resining today? I'm going to be resining a clock. Now, nah, come on, a clock with an L in there, not a, a you almost got me saying it. <laughs> no, I'm going to be resining a clock. Now, this is a pretty massive um, silicon mold. Um, I've actually made a, fa a fair few clocks so far. And I said clocks with an L in there, remember? <laughs> and today I'm actually going to be redoing a clock that I've already done because I loved how it turned out so much. So I'm actually going to be putting rocks in the clock face. So technically it'll be rock around the clock. <laughs> and I'm going to be using this little piggy pigment. So it'll be little piggies rocking around the clock. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of fun and I can't wait to see how it turns out because the first one that I did, which is now hanging on my sister's wall, I absolutely love how it turned out. <laughs> Talking about what I loved, what turned out good, last week's result looks amazing. Let me just show you, boom. How awesome did that turn out? Now, I have no idea if you can see because of all the glare. So I'll just sort of angle it up a few different ways. But, oh my God, it turned out way, way, way better than I thought it was gonna turn out. At one point, it looked like it was really, really dark like when it was drying, but then I came and looked at it like this morning and it was like, boom, the colors are back. And I'm like, yeah, baby, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. And it definitely, in my eyes, definitely looks like a dragon skin. Well, if I was gonna paint a dragon, this is probably how I would do the skin. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, so that's the dry result when I think it turned out awesome. <laughs> yeah, so with today's episode, as I said, I'll be doing a resin clock and I'll also be using this little piggy pigments. So now that I've told you what I'm gonna be doing today and I've showed you the dry result, we'll head over to the table. I'll show you the products that we're gonna be using and then we'll get into it. Thanks guys. Alrighty then, so here's all the products that we're going to be using today and as you can see we've got resin and we've also got pigments. The pigments themselves are from this little piggy otherwise known as TLP. The colours I'm using are cappuccino, grenache, mango, caramel drizzle and ore. Now you might remember these five colours from this particular piece here. Now, I absolutely love how this turned out and I love the colors so much that I thought, hey, I'm gonna try doing a clock from it. And to make the numbers pop, the color I've chosen for the numbers is TLP's ball gown. Now, ball gown is actually an interference gold. And what that means is on one angle, it's cream and on the other angle, it's gold. So I'm really hoping that it, the numbers pop in front of these colors here. But not only am I using the pigments to color the clock, I'm actually using rocks. And how I'm actually gonna do that is, once I've filled and colored the numbers, I'm then gonna, gonna do a clear layer of resin. Then I'm gonna put the rocks in that clear layer let that set for about four or five hours, then come back and then do a dirty pour using the pigments. And what I'm hoping happens is that when I do that pour, 
that the colors sort of flow through and intertwine around the rocks, making it look quite natural. Well, <laughs> I'm hoping it looks natural. <laughs> The resin itself is from Nor Glass and it's called Liquid Glass. And I'll tell you what, they've named it perfect because it is crystal clear. <laughs> now, this resin itself is actually a two to one ratio mix. And what that means is I need two parts of the base and one part of the hardener. So if I needed say 600 mils, of resin in total, I would use 400 mils of the base and 200 mils of the hardener. So that's the two to one ratio. <laughs> now, this particular resin, I actually went on an information day and a product testing day for this, and it's actually specifically designed for, for craft, like for resin art, or even say like river tables and all that sort of jazz. And what I mean by it's um, specifically made for craft is it's actually solventless. And so what that means is that it's actually not releasing any um, toxic fumes and you can actually sit right over the top of it and not breathe in any of that nasty stuff. So specifically safe for um, craft art and you don't need to wear a respirator when mixing the resin. I will be wearing the respirator when I'm opening and mixing the pigments. And the reason I say I'm using it when I'm using the pigments is because when you open up a jar of pigments, you will notice that a big dust cloud of pigments sort of comes up. And if you're breathing that in all the time, over and over and over, that'll actually sit on your lungs. And that's actually not very good at all. So if you don't have a respirator. I mean, the day and age that we live in, everyone has masks sort of lying around. So just wear one of them. So you don't necessarily need a respirator, but at least cover your mouth with something, okay? In this particular bottle here, we've actually got Isopro alcohol. Now, I actually buy my Isopro alcohol by the drum. Now, you'll notice it's actually 20 litres. And it is so much more cost effective to buy it in a drum if you're gonna be using it quite often um, because that 20 liter drum cost $80. And if I was to buy, say, a 500 ml bottle from Bunnings Warehouse, it's $22. So do the math there. $22 for 500 mils or $80 for 20 liters. Someone's making a lot of money there. <laughs> okay, so not only do we need the clock face, we actually need the clock mechanism. Now, when you're actually making a clock, make sure with the mechanism that you get the right size. You need the right length and also the right thickness. Because if you don't get the right thickness and it's say if it's too, too thin, you're not going to be able to actually um, tighten it up and it's it's constantly going to be sort of sliding. So yeah, make sure you get the right thickness and also size for the hole on the clock face. You might be wondering what these are. They're not paint brushes, they're actually silicon head brushes. Now the beauty about having these is say if you have a hair fall on the mold, you can actually scoop it up with that because um, you can't pick up hairs with just your fingers. It's, it's, well, you can, but it's just very hard. These make it so much easier just to sort of scoop it up and get rid of it. <laughs> you might be wondering what these are. This right here is actually a piping bag. And I'm using the piping bag I'm going to use the piping bag to actually fill all the numbers. So I'm going to snip off, after I've put the resin in there, I'm going to snip off a very, very small hole and then go around and fill all the numbers. The piping bag makes life so much easier to get it into small, delicate areas. So if you ever do a lot of resin work and you have to get a specific spot and angles and all that sort of jazz, get yourself some piping bags, 
because it makes life so much easier. I mean, I think I got like 200 piping bags for, for about $5. So it's a bargain right there. <laughs> Alrighty, now that I've gone through all the products, we'll clear off this. We'll start mixing some resin and we'll start making the clock. All right, thanks guys. Alrighty then, so we're ready to actually start mixing the first part of the resin, which is the resin for the numbers, okay? And we only need roughly around about 70 mils of resin, um, but it's always better to go slightly over than slightly less and not have enough. So what we'll do, we'll go to 90 mils, okay? So now, as I said, the, um, the resin is a two to one ratio mix. So basically we'll put 60 mils of the base and 30 mils of the hardener, which that equals 90 mils. And that's the two to one. So 60 mils, 30 mils, two to one. All right. So let's chuck the um, jug on the, the digital scales. Now, because we haven't turned on the scales just yet, when I turn the scales on, it's actually going to register so there's actually nothing on on the scales. So, so now it's actually saying that there's nothing on there. So if I was to take this um, jug away, it'll actually say minus like 40, whatever it is. So there we go, so minus 39, okay? And I've already got it set in mils. So when I put this back on, it'll go back to zero. There we go. So now what we need to do, we need to put 60 mils of the base in and 30 mils of the hardener, okay? So let's go the base first. Now when mixing um, resin, it is very, very, very important that you actually follow the, the ratio recipe to the T, basically. Like it, it needs to be exact because if there's not enough hardener or there's not enough base or whatever, um, what's actually going to happen is it's not going to set right and you might end up with soft spots within the resin, okay? So now that we've got 60 mils just there, I mean, we can just add it up to, to 90 mils, but it's always safer to clear it off. All right, so now we're at zero again, and now we put 30 mils in, okay? Now you should always get in the habit of doing that after each time you put your mix in to actually clear, clear off the scales because if, if you if you're weighing up a, a big amount and and you're in your head you might know what you you sort of adding up to but then you might get distracted which I get distracted quite a bit <laughs> and um, and you might mix up the wrong amount so it's always better to clear off um, your scales each time. There you go. So now that's at 30. So now in there at the moment, there is 60 mils of, of um, base and 30 mils of hardener. Okay. So we can get rid of this. And now we've got the fun job of mixing it up. <laughs>
Okay, so I've still got about an, another two minutes of mixing to go. But what I'm actually going to do, I'm actually going to add the, um, the this, this little piggy ball gown in there now. So then we can mix it around properly. And, and also um, mix the, the, the resin as well. So before I actually open the, um, the, the lid, I'm going to chuck on my uh, respirator just in case any of the, the dust uh, of the resin, sorry, any of the dust from the pigments um, comes up in my face. I don't, want, I don't want to be breathing that in. So give me two seconds and I'll just put the uh, respirator on. Okay, so we're almost ready. Alrighty, so as you can hear, my voice is quite muffled. Um, so while I'm doing this part, I'll chuck on some music. <laughs> All right. So now that it's sort of mixed through quite a bit, I can actually take this respirator off. Oh. Woo. Alrighty, so now we just got to let that sit for roughly around about five, 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes, sorry. And then that, that'll, that'll allow all of the, um, the bubbles to release and all of the, the chemicals to sort of intertwine and, and react with each other and actually, um, start forming to be the resin, okay? Alrighty, so we'll let those bubbles pop and then once they've popped, we'll then pour it into the actual um, piping bag, spin it up, snip it off and start pouring it. Alrighty, thanks guys. So the clock mold is nice and clean, ready to rock and roll. Rock around the clock. And always check the bottom, like feel the bottom of the, the cup. Because if you start to feel it heat up, that means it's ready to, to start pouring it, okay? And it's still quite cold at the moment. So we've still got, still got quite a, way, a while to wait. And I mean, there's still quite a lot of air bubbles in there as well. So, alrighty. So I'll just show you the uh, the resin now. You can see it's it's practically bubble free compared to what it was. There's just a few little bubbles around the edges, but I mean, it's going into the piping bag now anyway. So, um, 
it's gonna get, those bubbles are gonna get disrupted anyway, and majority of them pop as I pour it in. So. So I'm just going to pour it straight into the piping bag. Alrighty, so we can take that out now. So, and we just sort of give it a bit of a, a twist. Now what I like to do, I actually like to cut off the excess and then put a rubber band around it. So you can just snip that off like so. And then I'll put a rubber band around around there. That'll do. Alrighty. So then it just makes it a lot easier to handle when it's um, cut off. Alrighty. <clears throat> now this is actually the messiest part of um, making a clock. So what what is a very 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 good idea? Get a bit of paper towel and have it on standby so then like after you've done each sort of number you can sort of put put the paper towel underneath and then get to the next one. Um, what I actually do try to do is pour all the numbers let it sort of finish dripping and then sort of jump over to the next one. Um, but if, if, if you can't let it, let it drip out, then put the paper towel underneath, move on to the next number, okay? So we're just gonna cut a tiny little snippet off. As you can see, we've got like a nice, nice controlled um, flow. Alrighty. So let's start. See how it's nice and controlled if you make it a really small hole. So then what I do, I get to here, let it drip, and then move to the next one. See that? I'm going to let it drip. Drip, 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 and then bounce. And also by sort of pouring it like this, nice and slowly, you basically um, are lessening the chances of getting any air bubbles stuck in the numbers themselves. All right. Drip. Drip, bounce. Just for a bit of fun, 
I'm, I'm actually gonna pour the remaining of that into into this. Alrighty then, so now that the numbers are all in in the, the holes, we'll let that sort of cure overnight um, and then we can then start putting on to the next layer. So the next layer is going to be a clear layer and when I do that clear layer, then I'm going to put all the rocks all over it. Then after the, I've done the rocks, I'll let that cure and then I'll come back and do the all the colors after that. So then all the colors will be behind all the rocks, okay? All right, so it'll be at least 12 hours for me, but it'll be like two seconds for you guys. So, thanks guys. Alrighty then. So we're here the next day and the numbers have actually set up quite nicely. There's no sort of overflow and they all look really, really nice. Now, normally to test um, if the resin is set properly, you can touch it to see if, it, if you leave a fingerprint or not. I'm not going to do that with the numbers because I want them to be really, really nice and, and fingerprint free. So, another sort of beauty about sort of pouring into another silicon mold with excess, you can actually test that. So then that one there is completely fingerprint free. Now, you can see just here, I actually pressed on that like literally just a second ago just to see if it was ready. And the fact that it left the fingerprint in there means that it hasn't cured all the way. It's cured enough and set enough for me to pour the next layer onto it but it's not set enough to actually pull the resin out of the actual mold itself. So like if I was to pull that out, it'll actually go all floppy. So, so, and what, and you can actually hear that it, it actually has set quite enough, um, but it hasn't set fully. So it's definitely set enough to pour over the top but not set enough to pull it out of the mold, if that makes sense, okay? So, now that I know that the numbers are ready enough, I can actually do the clear layer. So with the clear layer, I'm basically put, putting the clear layer down first, then I'll put the rocks all over the clock face. I'll let that set for about four or five hours. Um, I don't have to let it set anywhere near as much as I need, needed the numbers to set because there's no color in it and I'm not, I'm not pouring onto other colors and those colors won't bleed. I'm pouring onto clear, so that's totally fine to do that. If I actually had colors down there and I was pouring other colors on top, then yes, I would let it set overnight and then come back the next day. But the fact that it's clear I can let that sit for about four or five hours and then I'll come back and then I'll put all the colors on the top. So in theory, the colors are actually going to be the back of the clock and the rocks are going to be the, the front. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so with the clear, I'm going to do about 300 mils. Okay. So in total, it takes approximately 1100 mils. To, to fill the whole clock face. So I'm gonna do 300 mils of clear, and then what's that? Uh, 1100 minus 300, that's 800. So then I'll do a combination of um, resins to equal um, the 800, okay? So so then in, in, in total, there'll be 1100 mils on there. Okay, so what we need in here now, because I'm doing 300 mils, I need 200 mils of the base and 100 mils of the hardener because it's a two to one ratio mixture, okay? So let's get the base.
Ah! The battery just went out. No! It was at at 195. Okay, so so we need we only need five more mils. Okay, I can't believe that that, that just turned off on itself. Now this might be a bit hard, so and it's always good to cross-reference now. So yeah, that's it, 200. I know you, you can't see because it, it's showing from that, that side. See, so yeah, it's on 200. So 200 mils is in there at the moment. So now we need 100 mils of the hardener. Okay, so now in here we have. Let it focus. There you go. See, 300 mils. Just there. Look at that, right on the line. Yew! <laughs> Alright. Now we're going to stir for about five minutes. Remembering to scrape all the sides down. And making sure that we, we get all the way down to the bottom as well. then so as you can see the bubbles are almost gone and it's ever so slightly starting to warm up from the feel so it's it's almost ready to start pouring so what I'm actually going to do um, over the next sort of couple of minutes um, because this was sitting overnight um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to spritz it with a little bit of isopro alcohol and give it a wipe with a paper towel. Alrighty, so apart from this clock, um, a while back, like quite a few months back, I actually started on this one when I was doing one of my other clocks and I actually... Um, said to myself that I actually want to wait until I do another um, rock clock so I can do this one because I wanted to see what it looked like with black numbers as well. Um, so that's why I did it on the small one. So as you can see, it's much, much, much smaller. <laughs> um, so this one was a lot more fiddly to, to get the numbers in there. Um, but what, I've, what I'm actually going to do with the rocks is... Um, I'm going to, I'm going to separate all of the, the big ones, obviously for the big clock, and then all of the small rocks are going to go in this one. Alrighty, so we're pretty much bubble free, as you can see there. There's just a few just around the edges, um, and it's starting to warm up quite nicely, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pour... The, um, the clear on there. Now, in this, this is actually all the big rocks. I've already separated, because I've got two packets of these. Um, I've already separated. So we've got all the small ones in there and all the big ones in there. Alrighty. Alright, so let's start pouring, guys. So what we're going to do, we're going to pour straight onto the actual little divot in the middle there and let 
the resin flow out itself. Alrighty, now, normally with resin, you could use like a, a blowtorch to actually get rid of all the bubbles, but because it's in a silicon mold, you can use a flame, but you just should just use a very, very soft flame, but you can actually use isopro alcohol. So if you just give it a bit of a spray, all the air bubbles disappear. Alrighty, so we're, we're ready to put the rocks down. Now, in case you're wondering why we're actually putting a, a clear coat down first, it's basically so the, the rocks have something to sit in. Um, and when I put the colored backing on, on the back, those rocks are gonna look like it's sitting on top of those colors. So um, it doesn't sort of, the, the, the colors don't sort of wash out the actual rocks themselves. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's start placing them. Now I want to make sure that I at least get one decent rock in between each number. So now we're just going to let that set for about four or five hours and then I'll come back and I'll add the, um, the, this, little, this little piggy pigments on top. Alrighty then. So we've let that sit for about five hours and it hasn't set and it's not cured. And I knew that that was going to be the case, but it's, it's set enough for me to actually add the final um, layer of resin on top which is gonna be the colored resin. So, we get to add color now, You. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna um, put the resin into this large container first, then I'm gonna separate them into the smaller containers to then add the colors. Okay, so I'm using five different colors. So I've got, I've got four small containers here, and then I'm just gonna use the big container as the fifth one. So, after I've mixed up the 800 mils of resin, then I will sort of divide it up evenly, mix the colors, then when the resin has actually started to, to, um, to heat up and all the bubbles are actually removed, then I will pour each of these colors back into this container, into the big container, to make a dirty pour. Then I will then pour over the top of all the rocks, allowing all the colors to sort of um, flow through and intertwine around all the rocks. So I'm pretty excited to see how it turns out because the clock that I've already done before with the rocks, um, it was actually only one color. Um, 
and I'm excited to sort of see um, the five colors sort of intertwine everywhere. So I'm pretty excited. You! <laughs> Alrighty. So as I said, I need 800 mils in here, but because sort of dividing um, 800 mils um, into a ratio of two, um, two to one, basically you need to divide that by three. So 800 divided by uh, three is about 267, maybe 266. Either way, I'm actually, what I'm actually going to do to make my life a lot easier is rather than going down to say 750 mils, where then it'd be 500 mils and 250 mils, it's always better to go a little bit more. So I'm going to go to 900 mils. So then what I need to put in here, the base is going to be 600 mils and the hardener is going to be 300 mils. So then that's two to one. Okay, we got that. <laughs> Alrighty. As I said, it's the lightest color, so now we can go to the, to the next color, which is the orange, and it won't make like a huge sort of um, um, color, color difference. Okay, now that they're all mixed through, I can take this uh, respirator off. Whoo! Put my eyes back on. Yeah. How much more like rich is the color when you um, mix them in um, resin? All 
Alrighty, so basically now what we're just going to um, do is wait for all these bubbles to sort of release and also for the resin to actually start heating up. So um, I'll turn the camera off and we'll come back when, when we're ready to start dirty pouring. Thanks guys. Alrighty then. So basically we've let the, um, the colors sit for about sort of 20 minutes um, and they're actually all starting to warm up quite nicely now. Now the reason why I actually did let them sit for, for so long was so that the actual um, chemicals themselves actually had a chance to actually fight against each other and, and, and work. Um, because if I didn't let them set up um, to almost so they're, they're ready to pour and, and I poured them into the one container, what's actually going to happen is all the colours are actually just going to mix together into one big messy colour rather than um, being a, a proper dirty pour. A dirty pour is so that you can actually see the colours. You don't want it to be a messy pour. If, I hope that makes sense. Alrighty, so... How, how awesome do they look? Like, how rich is that colour? TLP? Amazing. <laughs> like, look at that. Alrighty, so we'll start with this caramel drizzle and we'll start pouring it in to the main one.
Alrighty, well, <laughs> I'll tell you what, if the front turns out looking like that, I'll be so happy because that looks wicked. Alright, so as you guys know, with resin, um, it sort of does its own thing while it's curing. So there's, there's no... Um, so th th there's no knowing if that's actually going to stay how it is. Um, all we can do is have our fingers crossed that it stays exactly like that. Um, but we won't know until tomorrow when we actually flip it over and then actually take the mold off. So um, I'm very excited with how it looks at the moment, but um, I can't get too excited just yet because we don't know exactly how it's going to turn out just yet. Even this one looks really, really cool. All right, guys. So we'll leave this for um, overnight and I'll come back tomorrow and unveil it. <laughs> All right. So it'll be basically 12 hours for me, but it'll be like two seconds for you guys. So we'll see you in a second. Thanks, guys. Alrighty guys, so it's the next day and I'll tell you what, I am so stoked to see what this turns out like because it actually didn't change very much from yesterday well, on this side, so I can't wait to see what it looks like when I turn it over and take the mould off. But, what I want to do just to build the anticipation just a little bit more, I'm going to do that one first. <laughs> so... Alrighty, so that's what it looks like on, on this side. Now, you will notice that the rocks are sort of coming out a little bit, but you got to remember when you put the actual mechanism on, that sticks out anyway. So the, having the rocks sort of poking out on this side doesn't really matter at all, but you can um, grind it down or sand it down if you really wanted to. Alrighty. So, let's start peeling it back. And I, I am so excited to see what this one turns out like. <laughs> How much am I building the anticipation? <laughs> Alright. Here we go. One, two, Three. What? How sick is that? Oh my god, that looks awesome. Wow. <laughs> that looks wicked cool. Yeehoo! Wow. That's so awesome. Now I do have to drill out that that center point because I, I I overfilled it just a little bit too much so you can see that that's where I've got to sort of drill out that little bit I mean I could probably poke it through because it's really not that thick actually let's poke it through now just to build the anticipation a little bit more <laughs> There we go. So it wasn't that thick at all. But how awesome did that turn out? Yahoo! Wow. I am so happy with that. Now I do have to sort of um, grind the sides a little bit just to sort of get rid of all that I mean, I could even just snip it off with scissors, but wow, I'm super impressed with how that one looks. So, actually, I'll leave it turned over like that. Alrighty. Now, hey, why don't I take this off as well? <laughs> just to sort of build the anticipation just that little bit further. Hey, that's pretty cool. That's really cool, actually. Hey, 
That's that's pretty awesome, actually. I like that. <laughs> I'm not gonna put you through it. I won't do those ones. Or should I? Should I? No, I won't. <laughs> Alrighty. So let's do this bad boy. So we'll get rid of those little bits. Alrighty, so let's flip her over. And basically, I'm just sort of pulling it away a little bit just to sort of peel the numbers out. Alrighty, make sure it's in frame. <laughs> Actually, I've, I, I've been told quite a few times that um, I possibly need to take my microphone away, so <laughs> just because I get a little bit too excited, so let's unplug the microphone. Alrighty, so now, now we're just using the microphone from the actual phone itself. So let's just turn these micro the microphone and the receiver off, so I don't waste the batteries because I probably will forget to do that. Alrighty guys, are we ready for it? One, two, three. Oh ha ha! Yeah! That looks wicked cool! Oh, hell yeah! <laughs> what? I am so, so, so happy with how that turned out. Wow! Let's take you down and have a close up. Oh, did I hear that? A few hairs, but yeah, I'll just wipe that off. <laughs> all, all, all the dog hairs just came off my off my shirt straight <laughs> straight onto it. Wow! That looks so 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 cool.
run right there. Straight out the park. Yoo-hoo-hoo! Wow. Yoo-hoo-hoo! Yes! Not only did that one turn out awesome, which I think that one would look really, really cool, like, next to a computer. Like, say if you, like, got an office and put that right next to your computer. Because that looks so cool. But that, that right there, get out the frying pan or the deep fryer because we're having chicken tonight because that is a winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> yes! Yahoo! Wow! If you can't tell, I'm just a little bit excited. Just a little bit. <laughs> yes! And let's just take these out just for argument's sake. And there's a heart. There's a palm, palm leaf, I think it is. There is a, I guess, either a letter U or a massive shoehorn. I have no idea what that represents. And then we've just got like a disc. So these are actually earrings, by the way, or pendants, probably more pendants than anything. Because you can see the little hole there. Anyway, that's not the real reason we did this, Paul. That was the real reason, and I am stoked with how that turned out. Ah, uh, guys, thank you so much for joining me on this episode. It means the world to me that you guys join me every week and watch my videos. Uh, uh, I'm blown away with how it looks. I'm I'm I, I'm stuttering that I'm I'm blown away with how awesome it looks. Like in real life, this looks so 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 friggin' cool. I mean, the camera looks good because I'm looking through the camera right now. But in real life, it's just even more amazing. So yeah, so once again, guys, thank you so much for joining me on this episode. If you like what you saw, please give us a thumbs up. I'd really love it if you give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed and you want to subscribe, please hit the subscribe button, hit the little dark bell. That'll indicate when I upload a new movie. No, a movie. <laughs> a new video. <laughs> And if you think any of your friends or family might like watching this, please forward it on to them and, and say, hey, check out this lunatic. <laughs> but guys, thank you so much for joining me on this episode. I tell you what, this has been so much fun. <laughs> I love this. This is awesome. So... Yeah, once again, thank you again for joining me on this episode. This is the fine art of distraction.